But the reason why he said, excuse me, <clears throat> he is the way, the truth, and the life is because his path is based on is based on truth and it's based on life. And what we find is that people have their own understanding of what they believe the truth is, but but really what it's done is it's actually created I'm all set. I've got a water right there. I'm all set. Thank you. So Jeremiah six it says, Where at the where's that place called the crossroad? Basically. That place is the critical decision of where we have to decide if we want life or you want death. That's right. Amen. Will you will you choose the path of life or you choose the path of destruction? Amen. And every time we gather, we have to make a, a decision. Every day we wake up, we make a decision. Are, am I going to serve the Lord today or am I going to serve myself? Right. And I, I would say to you, if you're serving yourself, then you're serving the devil. Right. Amen. Because that doesn't take a lot to serve you, yourself. Amen. But it takes a lot to serve God and to have obedience to serve God. Amen. Whenever there's a reroute, amen, there's a continuing, there's a there's an ultimate path that, that is being chosen. Amen. The prophets have spoken. The trumpets have sounded and they still go according to their own way. So even, even the word of God, he says, my word has been written. People are still going according to their own way. Amen. I love the word stand in this text. When I was looking it up, I was looking up some of the uh, the Hebrew and some of the uh, some of the Greek. Amen. And the word to stand in the word in the word is is amod, a m o d. It means to abide. It means it means holding power. Let me tell you that when you make a decision for Christ, that Christ will give you holding power. He'll give you staying power. He'll give you the ability to stand where you need to stand. When I say stand, you understand. You're standing under. Amen. Most of us are standing under. We don't, we don't understand the concept of the cup and the saucer. What's in the cup stirred up gets on the saucer. Everything lands on the saucer. The saucer collects it. Amen. Many of us found themselves in a difficult place, and, and we call that place stuck. Somebody, you might be here today, you feel like you're stuck. You feel like, you know, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Pastor. I stand in the ways and see and, and ask. And that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm at that place where I'm standing in the way and I'm seeing and I'm asking and I'm looking. And it seems like I'm still stuck. Amen. Well, I, I want to encourage you today. Amen. Uh, what you call stuck, somebody else might call stagnation. What you call stuck may not necessarily be stuck. Your being stuck may be somebody else's being released. Amen. We, it just depends on what situation you're in. Amen. Yeah, many have found themselves in those places, amen. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean uh, that Jesus won't make a way. Jesus will make a way when we, when, we, when we look to him to make that way. So look at this, this text here today, Acts 16. We're going to read it out of the book of Acts. Good morning, guys. Acts 16, verse 16. Now it happened. Say, now it happened. Now it happened. As we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim us the way. Of salvation. So we're talking about Jesus, the truth, the life, the way, the truth, and the life. The Jesus, the way. The way is the way of salvation. Amen. And he says, these are the ones that proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days until Paul got annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Yes. But when her masters saw their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Yeah. 
And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. 1625. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Say they were listening to them. They were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Right. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But call, pa Paul called out with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. <laughs> then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house, and he took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Amen? Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So what we find is we, in our text today, we find Paul and, and Silas, uh, Silas were in prison for, for basically preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. For telling others about Christ. And they said, these Jews, uh, who, who are these? Uh, they're, they, were, they're, they were even making an assumption that they weren't Roman. They were, they were making assumptions about who they were because they were different. They were, they were, they was, these were men of a different sort. These, these were men that, that had come to proclaim the word of God. Amen. They, they said, these men are servants. This, this, this damsel, whatever she was, it, this girl, she's a certain slave girl. She was possessed with a spirit of divination. Amen. And if you had time to study that out, you can study that out for yourself. That's the spirit of Python. Amen. She had the spirit of Python. Amen. Because uh, a lot of times we don't, we have, we're not going to go in deep into that because I'm even going to touch that. But that, that spirit that gets on. Amen. So she was foretelling. She, she had a gift of foretelling. So she had it. For the most part, she had it. Uh, she had it right who they were. She was speaking about who they were. She said, "These men are servants of the Most High, who proclaim to us the way of salvation." So this tells me that even the spirits know who you are. That's right. Amen. It's telling me that the realm of darkness knows exactly who we are. When we when we say that we're walking according to the way and we're walking according to the truth and the life, those things stand out by themselves. Because when you say you, you know the way, that way of salvation, you walk upright, you stand in the way. Amen. When you say you have the truth, then what, what truth do you have? What life do you have? What, what part is it that you, are, that you say that you possess? Because if you say you possess it, other people are going to see it on you. Are they going to know that it's not only by your own, own devices that you haven't come out of certain things? I didn't come off of drugs. I didn't come out of alcohol. I didn't come out of abuse on my own. I didn't choose my way. It was the way of salvation. Amen? Amen. So she follows and she, she does this for many days. And then you see Paul. He starts to get annoyed, amen, and he starts to say, wait a minute, what's, what's, what's this all about, what, what, what's going on, amen, so what happens is they eventually, they get thrown into the prison, and then you find this Philippian jailer, he ends up getting saved, because he says, well, uh, he says, what must we do, sirs, what must we do to be saved, amen, and a lot of people, when they, when they look at the text of this, they'll start to preach on, on 25, where it says, uh, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, and suddenly there was an earthquake, and suddenly the, the doors were open, amen. And, it, and they'll preach on the midnight hour, they'll preach on the, a few things, amen. But what I like about the jailer is that he called for the light. That's right. He called for a light, amen. It, it says he called for a light, he runs in, he falls down. And he's trembling before Paul and Silas, and he, he serves. What must I do, do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. 
Amen. And, and not only that, you and your household. This is what he was saying. So what you need to know, church, is that they were heading to a certain place. How many of y'all read, read the text with me? Where were they headed? Anybody? They were headed where? Say it. To, to, to the place of prayer. They said they were headed to the place of prayer. Verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer. As they were on their way to pray. This is when everything broke out. Amen. As they were on their way to pray. Amen. And to, and to, and to praise their God. Amen. And basically we were going to church. If you want to say that they were going to church. What you need to know church. Is that they were headed to the prayer meeting. Amen. And when they encountered the young girl with the spirit of divination.